He also will be preaching at Scottsburg Baptist on Wednesday night. But we'll still have a program here on Wednesday night for our prayer meeting. Um, also, I'll mention um, this morning during worship, we will take up our annual Annie Armstrong offering. Um, if you've seen the bulletin, uh, we've got a bunch of things going on, cornhole tournament. Uh, next Sunday, I believe, is that May 1st, we'll take up a love offering for Bonnie Wilson, and she is currently in Durham at the uh, Duke Hospital, so keep her in prayer. Um, and again, on uh, next Sunday, we'll have our regular monthly meetings at 5 p.m., um, Mother's Day, there will be no evening service. And for those that would like to participate in the Senior Citizens Lunch at 12 on May 10th in the Fellowship Hall. Also keep in mind a revival coming up on May 15th through the 18th here. The evangelist Roger Roller will be speaking. Um, anybody else have any announcements or things they'd like to say? If not, do there any children would like to come up for the children's message? Anybody have any idea what Jesus looked like? The Bible really doesn't tell us what he looked like. But God sent Jesus as his son on earth. I imagine he was an average looking man. He didn't want him to be too big or too small, just a regular man. But Jesus was all powerful. We have in the scripture in the Bible from the book of Mark. He healed a paralyzed man. He calmed a storm while on a ship. He walked on the water. He fed the 5,000. He healed a blind man. Does he sound very weak? He's a, he was a strong man. He could do a lot of things. And yet as strong as he was, what did Jesus preach? To love one another. To be kind to one another. And so... When Jesus was facing death on the cross, we have a song we sing. He could have called 10,000 angels. <clears throat> Jesus could have done that. He could have called 10,000 angels to come from the sky and defend him. But that was not his purpose in life. He had to die for our sins so that we could have the chance to go to heaven. Mm -hmm. But I'd like to leave you with this verse from chapter 12 of the book of Mark, verses 30 through 31. This you, you, shall, you should remember. And this is the words of Jesus. And thou shalt love thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind, with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is no other commandments greater than these. By loving your neighbor, it means treat other people as you would want them to treat you. Jesus said we should be kind and nice to one another. Look out for one another and take care of one another when they're in need. Let's have a word of prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for the teachings of Jesus in the Bible. And Lord, we thank you for these young people being here to have worship with us. Please guide them through the week. In Jesus' name we pray. If y'all would like to take a bag and go collect the coins.
Thank you, Robin. Thank you, children. It's prayer time now, Heightsburg. Are we have any prayer requests from the floor? I know Bonnie's in deep, and she needs a special prayer this week. Uh, she's going through a lot of, a lot of stuff this week. Remember me, I'll be going to Duke tomorrow. You're going to Duke tomorrow? We've got some tests or something? Five. Yeah, okay. Keep Ms. Overby in your prayers tomorrow. Mm, I know she's in pain. Lynn Overby? Okay. All right, if no more, I'll take a haul. Okay. All right, I'll ask Deborah to place off for a, minute, a few minutes for all of us to pray, and then I'll end us with our prayer. Heavenly Father, as we come before your throne of grace this morning, dear Lord, we want to pray a special prayer on all the people that was mentioned that have sickness in their life, dear Lord, that's lost loved ones. Just be with them, heal them, touch them in a special way, dear Lord, especially Bonnie, dear Lord. Ms. Overby, as they go to Duke this week, dear Lord, just be with them, comfort them, help them in this situation. We want to thank you for our neighborhood church, dear Lord, that we can reach out to people in the neighborhood and witness to people, dear Lord, just guide and direct us as we go through this, dear Lord. We want to thank you for our church family and the unity we have to work together to the betterment of our community. Thank you for all the parents to bring these children to church every week, dear Lord. Just, just bless them in this. Uh, as we take up our Annie Armstrong offering this morning, dear Lord, we just want to pray a special prayer for all the missionaries that use this money to go out and reach people for Christ, dear Lord. These offerings seem small to us, but all added up with all the churches, dear Lord, it makes a special effort to reach people for you, dear Lord, and we want to thank you for that. Uh, be with the pastors. He's uh, working away this morning, dear Lord, in revival, and we just pray a special prayer on that and help it to witness to people and save a few souls, dear Lord. We just we want to thank you. Amen. Well, time came, and i got to talk now. Um, I want to ask you a question. I mean, to ask the uh, uh, question, um, how strong is your belief? Thinking about that, I'm on, what I'm going to try to say today, I'm hoping it's going along with what Andy preached uh, on Men's Day, and that's to be the responsibility and importance of being a Christian. Okay, I'm going to read you a meaning to a word, and I want you to tell me what the word is. Let me find that. Deliverance from the guilt and the power of sin. Salvation. Salvation. Okay. Now, uh, I asked the person, first thing this morning, would he get up and say something, uh, to tell how important is that relationship with God? Is with well, Robert. I'm going to, Robert, you don't mind? How about...
Thank you, Rob. Uh, we can all say we agree that our salvation should be one of the one things we should have mostly in our life. That should be the important thing we should have. Um, let me ask you this. Uh, in your priorities of life, where does your relationship with God stack up? And now... Uh, I'm going to say this, and everybody might agree with it, but when a person, for my instance, for, uh, we live with mom and daddy when we were young age, uh, we got to go to school, and our priorities are uh, we get a job, buy an automobile, have a good time, uh, find a girl to mur that will marry you, and then you would, <laughs> and then you would, uh, one important thing to it was having kids. 
you got changed your life. But um, then you have your grandchildren, loved them. But um, one thing that I didn't do, I didn't put God first. In your salvation, you should have God as your number one priority. Because without that, there's no meaning to life. You have nothing to look forward to. And it, when you die, it's all over with then. It's, it's no turning back. You deal, you get what you dealt yourself. All right. The benefits of salvation uh, is knowing that you have a chance to go to heaven. Now, like Robert says, he wants to go to heaven. He wants to see some loved ones that he never met. And I think it would be, a, it would be exciting. I'd like to meet some of my old generation. And talk to them, just know how it is. That, that should be one thing. And um, it should be important to everybody. Now here's one question I want to ask you and I want y'all to think about it. Does your salvation have influence on other people? I want you to think now. What you do with your salvation, does it affect anybody that comes around you or your loved ones? Now, uh, Let's talk about the importance of a parent telling their children about the, the importance of salvation. Everybody in here would say, the parents would start to say, love their children. They do anything in the world for them, uh, buy them anything within reason, but uh, it's not much you wouldn't do for them. But why is it so hard for a parent to talk to them about their salvation. It should be the most important thing you should have ever done. And you're to talk to your uh, kids and let them know sure, because you, I don't believe it's a parent in here would want to know that their kid went to hell, because you was too lazy to say something to them about it. And I don't believe you want to go to hell and know that you and when you got down there and you had to go to hell and you knew how it was, and you know your parents your uh, loved ones is here on earth is living a life that's where they're going to go. That would put that much more agony in you. Okay. Us as parents need to teach our kids all that we can tell them about the relationship with God. Don't wait until it's too late to tell them. Plus, don't wait on somebody else to do something that you should have done yourself. Um... How many here have grandchildren? Okay, they're important to you. Um, do they have a tendency to pick up bad habits or in good habits? All right. Well, I've got one that uh, straightened me out one day. Uh, I called. I called home one day and I told Debbie, I said, let me talk to Liddy. And I heard, she put on speakerphone and said, Papa wants to talk to you. And she said, no, I don't want to talk to him. I said, well, I'm going to come down there and I'm going to whip your butt. And she said something to Debbie, I don't know exactly what it was, and she said, still wouldn't talk to me. So I said, well, I'm going to go home, go to your house and tell your daddy to come down and whip you. Now, this is what got me. She said, Jesus listen to you. I'm a baby prayer. to say that you are my granddaughter. Because you know that at least she's picking up something good and tearing them and leading them in the right direction. You know, but they can't do it but you don't bring them to church. Uh, let me give you an illustration of what happens when you put it all. Turn your Bibles to Luke 16, chapter. 16th chapter of Luke, verses 19 through 31. Okay, 16. Verses 19 through 31. All right, this is the parable Jesus told about the rich man and Lazarus. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and lived in luxury, living luxury every day. 
At his gate was laid a beggar named Lazarus, covered with sores and longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs came and licked his sores. The time came when the beggar died and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, there where he was in torment. He looked up, he looked up and saw Abraham far away, with Lazarus by his side. So he called to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me, and send Lazarus to dip his finger, tip his finger in water and cool my tongue, because I am in agony in this fire. But Abraham replied, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things while Lazarus received bad things, but now he is comforted here and you are in agony? Besides all this, between us and you, a great chasm has been set in place, so that those who want to go from here to you, you cannot, nor can anyone cross over from there to us. He answered, Then I beg you, Father, rem listen to this real close. Then I beg you, Father, send Lazarus to my family, for I have five brothers that him. Let him warn them, so that they will also, come to this, also not come to this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophet. Let them listen to them. No, Father, Abraham, he said, if, any, if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. He said this to them, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophet, they will not convince even if someone rises from the dead. Okay. All right. I'm going to go to... Psalm 68, verses 18. I find it. All right, 68. 18. When you sit on high, you took many captives, you received gifts from people, even from the rebellious, that you, Lord God, might dwell there. Um, that's pertaining to what had been doing to hell. Last went to Exodus chapter 20, verse 6, 5 and 6. You should not bow down to them or worship them, for I am the Lord your God, and am a jealous God, punishing children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. Um, so it's trying to say that before that it's very important for you to tell your kids about the um, salvation. Because you, uh, that's going to be a, a, a situation I don't think you would want them to go through, and you either. But it's real important. But uh, in, uh, in, in, for them to go to hell, that's going to be a, a torment I just don't think anybody would want to do. But, um, Okay, we get, I've got two words I want to give you a definition of. I want to give you the, the worldly version of it and a biblical word, the bi description of it. All right, the first word is hope, H-O-P-E. The um, worldly definition would be, I say, well, I hope Deborah has a good day today, and I hope everything goes right, and I, I hope uh, and that I just to go somewhere that he wants to go, and I hope everything turns out all right. And, you know, that's just a common version of it. All right, now, we're going to use the biblical version of it. Now, um, I've heard this, and I've heard Carl Daniel teach about it in Sunday school class. Uh, he's had people to ask, uh, are you going to heaven? And they would say, well, I hope I am. Well, um... This is my opinion now. When somebody says, I hope I am, 
that's saying that's a 50-50 chance. Because you either know or you don't know. It's no in between. I haven't read in the Bible where God's got a place that is set aside for the people who don't know whether they want to be a Christian or not. Either you're a Christian or you're not a Christian. Either way, it's your choice. Gave you that, God gave you that uh, choice to make. Uh, okay, the next word, tomorrow. Well, I hope that it rains tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to visit my daughter tomorrow. Uh, that's the, way the worldly version of it. Now, when it comes to a biblical version of it, Tomorrow um, is a word that you should never use when it comes to your salvation. Uh, when, when did God say, is he dead salvation? Did he ever say anything about tomorrow? Okay, today is the day of salvation. He should never, a Christian should never use this word when he or she is talking about their salvation. Let's turn to... Um, James chapter 4. All right, chapter 4, verses 13 and 14. Now listen, you who say today or tomorrow we will go to this or to that city, spend a year there, carry on business and make money. Why you do not even know what will happen tomorrow? What is your light? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast in your arrogant schemes. All such boasting is evil. If any one of them knows this good thing they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is sin for them. In other words, when we use um, our life compared to eternity, we're just like a mist. You see it now? For a few seconds, it's gone. And that's, the way that, that's the reason we say that putting off tomorrow, which you should to do today, is wrong. You, today is the day of salvation. You need to get it done today because you're not promised tomorrow. Okay, here comes the part that two guys is going to like. Uh, Dean and Andy, come up here, please. All right, when you, when you stand over here and one stand over here. All right, this is a, a cut-down version of Judgment Day. You... Go in front of God, he looks up your name in the book and he sees whether you have all wrote down in it. Okay, and all right, I'm going to look in the book of uh, life here and see if I can find your name. Should be in. Okay, let's I see. Got now. I got faith this time. All right, let's see now. Your last name is Loftus. Okay, let me see. Yeah. I do believe see, I see your name in there. I knew it. I've been working, working on the bus for a while. All right. That's the thing to do. Um, I see where you worked hard. You kept the faith. Try to. It's spread hard. it. And um, I'm going to grant you the way you can stroll around in heaven. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Okay. Now, benefits are going to heaven. No pain. No sorrow. Everlasting life for Christ. Yep. All you're going to do is praise. Okay. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to lose it. Yeah. <laughs> well, let me look, Dean. And how you see you spell your last name? <laughs> All right. Now, this is just an illustration. These guys right here, they. Their life is for Jesus. I'm just getting him to use it as an illustration. Okay. 
Well, I'm going to tell you. Yep. I don't see it. Going to have another chance. Uh, no. Nah. <laughs> Can't have another chance. Uh, He's as close as good as I am. Uh, all I have to say is that um, you would just have to go to the park and go to hell. Mm -hmm. Might not want to hear that, but well, I don't yeah. see your name in the United You have many chances, many opportunities. How many Oh, excuse me. How many times the doctor, I mean, the preacher gave you a, the benediction and asked you to come up here, but you turned it down. That's for one of the year. <laughs> All right, but you got that choice. Now, I'm going to tell you, now, this is a little humor, like you're going here, like I told him, the benefits of him going to heaven. Now, it's not no benefits going to, to hell now. I can't think of any. But, it's like this, the benefits that he's going to be enjoying, you're not. That's right. The, you're not going to get no water, just like drivers. You're not going to get no water. You're not going to be able to go back and tell your children they need to change their life or anybody you love them. There's going to be no air conditions. There's not going to be no break time. You, where you can just let me go cool a little while and go back. So I'm just get, trying to... Put, illustrate the importance of what your salvation is. You can either go with Dean, with Andy here, have a good time, you know, celebrate, praise God, or either you can go with Dean and be in agony the rest of eternity. Now, like I said, when we're here on earth, we think 75, 80 years, long time. But when you get to eternity, we just like it, just like a blinking of an eye. That's about all along we we here to clear the eternity. Thank y'all, folks. Yeah, man. Thank you. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I see it. Everybody's not going, and it's it's a hard thing to think about. But I, I got this right here. I want to say now. The ones that say that I know that I am going, I got one thing I need you to do for me. I want you to think. You, when you say you know you're going, are you using your standards, worldly standards, or are you using God's standards? You can't go in on a little part of worldly. I'm a, well, I got a little world standard that I'm doing and a whole lot of God. It's either all or not. But you got to use that standard when you think about it. All right. Okay, but I got some good news for you to want Andy when you go to heaven. I got some good news for you. All right, let's go to the book of John. John chapter 14. Done with verse 15. Reason I'm straining a little bit, I hear my eyes fixing it, and it's hard enough to read. Uh, this is what you're going to enjoy. The ones that didn't, not able to go, won't get this. But the ones that give their life, live like they should, this is what you're going to get. Ch chapter 14 of John, starting with verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you an advocate to help you and be with you forever. The Spirit of truth, the world cannot accept him because it, is neither, it neither sees him nor know him. But you know him, for he lives within you, and will he in, be in you. I will not leave you as an orphan. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you, because I live, you also will live. On that day you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will too will love them and show myself to them. So that's the benefit, Andy, that you get to go to heaven. The ones that choose to go there, 
That's what you're looking forward to. All right. Oh, yeah. Uh, before I forget, I, I didn't tell you what the title of my uh, sermon was, so I'm going to tell you this. The title of my lesson is Five Words That You Hope Are Not the Last Words That You Hear From God. That is sorry I never knew you. Uh, don't worry about what the world thinks about you. You need to worry more about what God thinks about you. Um, let's go to Matthew 7, chapter 7. Chapter 7, start with verse 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the ones who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and in your name drive out demons, and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Only God knows, only you and God knows what's in your heart. Nobody else. And your answer, gee, you're the only person that has to answer for what's in your heart and where you live your life. Nobody else can judge it. God has the final word. He's the final judge. What he says goes. Okay. Okay. Uh, I have three questions I want to ask you before I close. I want you to know, tell me which one of these categories do you fit in as a Christian? Are you a 365-day Christian? You do God's work every day. Or are you a 52-day Christian? You're just a Christian only on Sunday. Number three, are you a person who just comes on holidays or just when you need God to do something for you? You got to think, which category that do you fall in? Being Christian is hard. Even the prophets that he had to go through, he had to go through a lot. Most of them, a whole lot of them give them their lives for it. Some of them hit his cuts off. Some of them were stoned. Peter was crucified upside down on the cross. So it's not going to be easy. It's going to be people that, your friends, your relatives, that's going to ridicule you. Why in the world you want to believe in that right there or believe in a person that you can't see? But a whole lot of times it's not seeing a person is giving you more that much stronger your faith. You've got something to look forward to in your life. Um, it's, it's people, it's, it's just saying this, I want to be a Christian, but I just, I'm not really want to give up worldly things. That's the main thing, I think, reason it is. People just don't want to give up the worldly things. Because that's what they live for. But to give that up, they're just not willing to do it. But they don't know what the, the sacrifice is at the end. When you just believe in what your worldly goods is, and that's all you believe in, you will be just like I illustrated with Dean. You'll be the hell, and that's, that's going to be it. No begging, no second chances. He gave you all the chances in the world for you to come up here and ask forgiveness for your sins and everything. Okay, here's something I'm guilty of. The preacher told me, he said, be sure to tell this, Buster. I said, well, I'm going to do it. When the preacher gives you an invitation, you know you need to go, but you grab it, pew, and you hold it. And you say to yourself, you know, I know I need to go, but I'm going to put it off next Sunday. Well, maybe next time I see him, that's when I'm going to do it. But today is the day, not tomorrow. Anything can happen between now and tomorrow. But you know, I have plenty of them that come up and do it. I tell you, when you come on up here and kneel down in front of the pew and everything and tell 
to preach your problems. It's just like lifting a load off your body and your mind. You don't know what joy it is. Andy, will you pray for us? Don't worry about what the other person across the aisle is thinking. If you come up this aisle, that person might be the same, having going through the same problem you're going through. So you, when you come up here, it might give that person the courage to come up here too. Uh, let's see, Robert, you want to come up here and close this? Thank you all.